Hi, how you doing? We're going to talk about how do I write an equation into function notation. And function notation is strictly setting it up so that you have an independent variable and a dependent variable. Your dependent variable, you are going to say, is equal to some expression involving the other variable. So this expression up here has two variables. It has an x and it has a y. So I need to write this and solve for one of them. Well, what we now need to understand is that if I have an x and a y, and I base this off of our xy coordinate plane, okay? Once upon a time, you may have learned, or maybe you didn't, but this is a y, and this is your x-axis. So what we need to understand here is that the x-axis is always my input value. So this horizontal axis, no matter what graph, if you're in science, if you're in the business world, it doesn't matter where you are, that this horizontal axis is always considered to be your input axis. Input axes are also the ones that you can pick anything along. You don't have to have just specific numbers. You can pick any value that you want to input. And therefore, my input data specifically determines what the output is going to be. So in this case, whatever I plug in for x is going to specifically tell me what y is. So we have this idea of function notation. So I want to put it so that this function says that whatever I plug in, it will give me this value out. And that's basically what a function is. It is basing one variable off of another's work, pretty much. So if I take a look at this, I don't have any expression saying that one variable is based off of another one's work. And the way that I do that for this particular case is that I need to isolate the y variable because that ex explanation that I just went through with the y and x-axis. The y-axis is always dependent upon the x-axis. So therefore, in this case, I am going to solve for the y variable, which means I'm going to isolate it and get it by itself. So I'm going to go through the processes that I've gone through before, much like you're solving for one variable. If I wanted to solve for y, I need to get away from it the addition of positive 3x. And the way I get rid of 3x is by subtracting. That's the only way I can ever remove some, some term from one side, all of it. So I go subtract 3x, and I subtract 3x. Now the thing to be careful about here is that this is an 8, and this is a negative 3x. So these terms are not considered like terms. And the only way we can ever simplify expressions is if they are like terms. So in this case, they are not. So I just have to simply write it as that expression. So what I'm left with is 4y is equivalent to negative 3x plus 8. And the reason I'm writing it such that the x variable, or the x term is in front of the constant term, and the constant is just simply a number, and a, a variable term is just something that has a variable with a coefficient, is because they call this the idea of just writing it, that's the standard form of it. And the standard form is that if you ever have a letter before a number, that's the way you would do it. So now the last thing I have to do is divide by 4. So in this case, I divide by 4. And the important thing is, is to realize that I'm breaking apart the multiplication. That's why I'm dividing. I am not subtracting 4. I am dividing by 4. And when I take a look at this over here, I have two terms. So when I divide, I must divide both terms because they are separate. So because they are separate, because of that addition sign, I must divide both. And I divide by 4. And what I'm left with is y is equivalent to negative 3 fourths x plus 2. And that, my folks, is now considered to be in function notation because I have one variable being set up as the work of another, where if I took negative 3 fourths times some number plus 2, I would then have this value. And the only way that I can get that y value is by doing this work 2x. So I hope that helps with the putting something into function notation, and I will see you next time.